Now we're focused on strengthening the shoulders. Again, we got the length by inhibiting the muscles all around the shoulder that are disallowing us from doing these special moves. I know it's a lot of fancy words for how do we get our shoulder to do the work instead of everything else. And that's what we're gonna do today. So we're not using a lot of weight, we're just using a lot of light weights or just bands that we can have at home or order them very easily. The very first one is actually with nothing other than Jamie Sue's gonna lay on the ground and she's gonna do essentially a, a Superman on the floor. So she's going to lay down with her head facing the ground, her arms are extended out, hence the Superman, and she's gonna lift her hands off the ground as well as her feet, and then she's actually going to face with her, yep, just look forward just a little bit. She's holding it for 10 seconds, so let's say six, seven, eight, nine, 10. She's gonna come down and then just rest. So where she's feeling it is she's feeling it here in her shoulders to get her hands off the ground. She's also feeling it here, which is a lot of the postural stability muscles that surround the shoulder. So let's go ahead and do another one. And then she's even feeling it in the glutes too, because that's what's picking her feet up. And because all of this is called your posterior chain, it's the back of you and how everything works together, there are absolutely implications about your hips affecting how your shoulders work, especially on the pickleball court. So down one more time, she's gonna rest again. So we're just pulsing holds here. We're gonna do three of them, we're gonna hold for 10 seconds each. Again, you're welcome to do more of these if they're starting to really feel good for you, but let's make a target of doing this three times throughout the day. So now that we've done three of those and we've focused on the squeeze of our shoulders and in between our shoulder blades here, how's that feel posture-wise? Good. Probably feels easier yeah. to be up and tall at this yeah. point. Again, now when you're on the court and you're trying to challenge your opponent by having your, it's gonna be a lot easier now. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, so the very next one is she's gonna grab her fancy little pink weights, which I actually like that these are light. Seriously, if you at home right now don't have any weights, use your pickleball paddle, seriously, because we actually only need one, but she's, using both at the same time. Are we gonna do both arms? <laughs> uh, I actually like to do this one arm at a time. You okay. can do both, and that's actually a good point. We can do both at once, but when I do both, I lose some of the connection to the shoulder, and to me, that's the only thing that is important about this. So what we're doing here is we're gonna do, we're gonna hold for five at the top, so she's gonna squeeze, 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 she's gonna pull it away all the way to the top. We're gonna hold for five. Five, four, three, two, and one. Now she's gonna let it down. She's gonna do five repetitions now. So no holding at the top, she's just gonna do a clean five. The reason for holding the five at the top is it's an opportunity to find and disconnect the neck muscles from the shoulder. Because at first, you're gonna really wanna do this. This is too close. We wanna be out. This neck should be nice and relaxed. This should be what's doing all the work. It's probably even hard with five pounds. So if that's the case, if, if she thinks she can do hold for four now, and then we'll have you do four, good. So now we'll do four. And so this would actually be up to her. So to me, as the trainer, her form is actually okay. But you can fool your trainer with good form. If she's now feeling like she's getting everything up here and not here, I would actually want her to take the weight off and keep doing them without a weight or with your pickleball paddle. But I want you to keep doing it. Now hold for three, yep. And then do three. How's the shoulder feel? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's working. Good. And then, yep, so again, she's thinking out, out, out. So she's actually trying to almost oppose my hand and then just happens to go up. Well, she's holding for two, a quick two. There we go, one and one more for two. We're gonna hold for one at the top and then down, one last one. Make it a good one though, nothing in the neck. There you go. It's very tough. It's hard to focus on that. It's very tough, yeah. yeah. But that the opportunity to squeeze at the top for the couple seconds yeah. It's kind of hard to think about squeezing, so there's nothing magical about the amount of time, but I like doing it that way from five to one because it's very challenging. You'll want out in the yeah. middle of it, yeah. but at the same time, it gives you an opportunity to make sure you're using your shoulder, not your neck. Because out there on the court, again, you're not using your, sh your neck when you do this. If you hit a backhand like this, yeah. it's clunky, it's not gonna be effective. But if your shoulder is free and strong, you're gonna get that from this. So the very next one is, we would normally do the other side, but we're gonna show you something else so that you're not here all day with us. But this one is going to be, she's going to get down onto all fours here and she's going to put this in between her hands. And then from there, yep. This? Yep. Okay. Now with a little bit of tension outside of it, meaning if she was too close, the band wouldn't be working. Okay. A little bit of tension here. Now you're going to do sh small circles with one arm. There you go. So now you're taxing all of the small muscles inside of the shoulder. Now while she's here, there might be a tendency to start to round the back. So I want to make sure that her shoulder blades are still pinched back nicely. They look, yep, they look good. How's the shoulder feel? That's good, actually. You feel it in all the little horrible. small parts. It's horrible. Yeah, good. That's a good thing when it comes to strength. 
activating. But it's not pain, pain. That's no. whenever we do this, it's not pain. Yeah, it's a lot of times when it comes to fitness stuff, if you find that one side feels significantly more painful than the other one, that might be more like injury pain rather than this is hard stuff pain. Yeah. Yep. Activating all those muscles. Exactly. And she's right hand dominant when she plays and she's expressed that she has some, some discomfort in the shoulder sometimes too, which is why she's significantly better on the left side than the right side from this. As what I, I've had some shoulder issues before. This has been a huge way to get that fixed because it's not about using heavy weights here. It's about using small weights in multiple directions. Cause that's exactly what our pickleball paddle asks us to do too. Good. Nice. Now we're going to do one last one. This one we would normally do inside of a doorway, or if you're at a gym, there's a resistance band that's hooked to something. I'm going to currently be the hooked to something. So she's going to go ahead and do this and I'm just going to hold it for her. What she's doing is she's going to externally rotate. Yep. But now that she's there, yes, yeah, she's going to go up and down instead. So to where it's comfortable. If she went a lot higher than that, she might feel a pinch in the shoulder. So she's just externally rotating. Exactly. So by using these muscles here to rotate, it's all the same muscles that you would use in a backhand. But at the same time, she's then taking them up overhead because it gets a lot different for the muscles when they have to deal with the same rotation as they're going overhead. If this tension was too much for her or too easy, she could, if this was hooked onto a wall or a door frame, she could move herself. For now, obviously I can make it easier by getting closer and harder if I went further, which I'm not gonna do to her. <laughs> <laughs> How's that feel for the shoulder? That's good. So we're doing a lot more of the training this time for the side and the back of the shoulder. Because even though we feel pain in the front of our shoulder sometimes, you can go ahead and rest. Okay. When we feel the pain in our shoulder in the front, a lot of times it's because of a dysfunction in the back of our shoulder. A lot of injuries come from the other side itself. So to protect the front of the shoulder, we're increasing the ability for the back of the shoulder because that's what decelerates us. If you think about a pitcher in baseball, when they throw, the only thing that stops their arm from continuing forever are these muscles here that keeps them back. Same thing for us. We hit a lot of things forward and overhead. These muscles do a lot. What you're feeling right now, <laughs> yeah. shoulder health. <laughs>